I'm Ed Steiner, doctor of medicine. Tonight's story has the title, When Mama Says Jump. Guardian of birth, healer of the sick, comforter of the aged. And the qualities of the worthy physician are three. The eye of an eagle, the heart of a lion, the hand of a woman. Concerns an exceedingly common disease in the teenage group, acne. The object in point, an athletic trophy. The case in point, Ray Dixon, age 17. I'm real proud of you. Thanks, Ma. Hey, I bet that's Charlie. Called about a half an hour ago. Says he's got a big surprise for you. Well, go answer it. Go on, boy. Okay. I'll check with you later. Right. You should have seen him, Mrs. Dixon. I've given up going to track meets, Lambert. Boy, I, I thought he was going to miss the third jump, too. Dix is a clutch jumper. He always comes through on the third jump. Well, tell Dix I'll check with him later, will you? Okay, Lambert. Dix, we got big things in store for you. What do you say to that, boy? Fine, Charlie. Fine. <laughs> What's he say? What's Charlie say? Let me listen. Tell you what we've done, Dix, boy. You remember old Benny Webster? <laughs> yeah. Well, old Ben and George and some of the fellows and I, well, you know what we thought of your father. Your father wasn't just a great high jumper, boy. He was one of the greatest guys that ever lived. Yeah, yeah, Charlie, sure. Thanks. And you know what we think of your mother, hey, Dix? Yeah, Charlie. Don't pick your face. Well, she's one swell woman, Dix, one of the greatest. So this is what we did. Oh, Ben and I, see, we, we know the guys on the selection committee for the big Colby relays up north. We called, they're inviting you, boy. What do you think of that? <laughs> Gee, I, I think it's swell, Charlie. It's okay, Thanks. Dix. Thanks a lot. So long, boy. Dix. Dix, the Colby relays. You know what that means. This is not high school stuff anymore. This is big time. I know, Mom. Means work, Dix. It means a lot of work. You can win up at Colby. You're as good as any jumper in the country right now. Dix, you win up at Colby, and you'll be in line for the Olympic trial. Hey, what's this Lambert tells me about you having to take three jumps to clear that cinch height this afternoon? I, I was trying a new approach to the bar. The coach at school said... Harris, what's he know? Dix, I keep telling you, come at the bar the way I've been showing you. Like your pa did. Flatter. Now come on outside and I'll show you. Say, aren't you late for work, Ma? Well, what's at the gym? A lot of fat old bags trying to reduce. They can wait. Never mind your shoes. I'll set the bar low. I just want to work on this approach. All right, now show me how you were approaching. It's nothing serious. Dix, I rigged this myself. I just didn't see it. That's all right. No, don't get up. Stay there. I'll call Dr. Steiner. What over here? Uh-uh. It's a 
bad bruise, Dix. Hurts a little. How about some mercurochrome? Uh, I'm sorry Mom troubled you about this, Doc. Well, she sounded pretty excited when she called. She still working nights at the gym? Yeah. She wanted to talk to you about this, but, well, she was late for work already. I'll phone her later and take a load off her mind. <laughs> Dix, I haven't seen you in my office for a long time. How come? Well, nothing's been the matter. I get my team physicals at school. Hey, Dix! Hey, Dix! Dix, I gotta talk with you. Oh, hi, Doc. What's cooking? Hello, Lambert. Dix, some of the gang's over at my place. Hamburgers. And then we're all gonna go down and hear this new spider-white combo. Sparky here. Says they're real cool. No, thanks, Lambert. Well, they got this new girl singer. Oh, man. No, no, thanks. I got things to do. Everybody's expecting you, Dix. I said I got things to do. Can't you understand that? Just because you break a lousy track record, Dix boy, that... I said I was busy. Dig it deep, pal. You're a long time dead. Not a ladies' man, huh? Uh, they get down, stand around some joint, listen to five guys blow their brains out the other end of trumpets and things. Matter of fact, it's not a joint. And that spider-white combo is something to hear. Anyway, I, I gotta practice. You're not gonna get much practice with all that disturbance. You can't beat them, why not join them? Uh, what's a party? You know, sometimes things don't sound half as bad if you hear yourself saying them out loud. Dixie used to level with me. You know, they know. It's my face. Pimples. Acne's a better word for it, Dix. And acne can be greatly helped. Nobody knows all the causes of acne, but we know enough. See, when you go through adolescence, the chemistry of your body changes. The oil glands in your skin become overactive. It shows in lots of ways. For instance, do you have bad dandruff? Yeah, sure. Kind of bad. Well, incidentally, dandruff can be part of it. It falls on your face and your shoulders. Some people think it spreads the stuff. Try good shampoo a couple of times a week. That'll help. Some guys say it's, well, from, from dirty blood. It's an old wives' tale. Dirty blood, dirty thoughts. I've even heard people say it has something to do with venereal diseases. Oh. It comes simply from overactive oil glands in the skin. That causes the pores to be enlarged. Some of them get clogged. Blackheads form, whiteheads. And if you get infection in them, uh, you get pimples. Don't pick at them. Dix, you can't communicate acne from one person to another. But if you pick at this stuff, it only spreads it over your own face more. Now you come on down to the office and let's start getting rid of those things. I don't know. Ma says I'll outgrow them. Well, some people do. A lot don't. At least they don't without medical help. Think it over. If you decide to come down to the office, I'll give you some hints on your diet that may be some help. In the meantime, if I were you, I'd get dressed up and go next door. Thanks. Thanks a lot, Dr. Steiner. Have a good time. common false beliefs about acne is that anybody who has it has been careless about washing his skin. Acne has little, if anything, to do with personal cleanliness. No amount of scrubbing will prevent acne from appearing and will never cure it. But the regular use of soap and water is important. And in washing, care must be taken to use fresh washcloths and towels daily. And for girls, cake powder should be substituted by a special face powder and powder puffs by fresh bits of absorbent cotton. Complexion brushes should be discarded. Rough clothing, sweaters, woolen material, should not be worn next to the skin. They have been known to aggravate acne. And above all, a person afflicted with acne should not keep gazing at himself in the mirror in shame and worry. Acne thrives on worry, on emotional strain.
Okay, Dix, try it again. No, it's no good, Dix. That's no good. should be at the gym working. I can go now, since you're back. Dix, I'm asking you a question. It's after 5 o'clock. Now, where were you? I went to see Dr. Steiner. He told me what to do about my face. What's this stuff? He gave me some lotion for my face, Mama. How many times do I have to tell you you'll outgrow it, Dix? Look. There's only four more days till the Colby relays. You can't waste time. Now get out there and go to work. No, no, thank you. But I would like to leave a message if I could. Would you tell Dr. Steiner that I'm sorry I missed my appointment again, but I won't miss any more. Tell him I'm going on a new schedule. All right, Dix, I'll tell Hurry, you. Hurry, you late. Cab will be here in a few minutes out and back. Charlie and the boys sure fixed you up, didn't they? Soup, shoes, everything. Yeah. Oh, Charlie, give you the plane ticket? Yeah. The money? In the coat. All right, now, Dix, when you get there tonight, take a cab and go straight to the hotel. Dix, will you listen to me? Now, you stay in bed until 11 tomorrow. And you finish eating by 11.30, and then go back up to the hotel room and stay off your feet. And about a half an hour before meet time, take a cab, go to the stadium. <laughs> Oh, there's Charlie. Hello? Charlie? Oh, Charlie, how am I ever going to thank you and the boys for all you've done for us? I know, but the stuff you got the kid. He'll come through for you, too. He's going to win up at Kobe. Well, not just for Ray's and my sake, but for all of you guys, too. Oh, Charlie. That's just about the sweetest thing anybody could say. <laughs> What's wrong? Oh, it was just something Charlie said. Come on, put your coat on. You're gonna be late. What did Charlie say? Nix, come here. Sit down. Dix, listen to me. The one thing your pa wanted was to make the Olympics. You see, an Olympic champion, well, with his reputation, it's easy for him to get backing. It's easy for him to go in business for himself. But your pa never made it. it about broke his heart. Listen, Dix, if you win up at Colby tomorrow, you'll be in line for the Olympic consideration. And Charlie and the boys are gonna back me. Back you. So I can spend all my time training you. And then, Dix, when you win at the Olympics, Ma. with your reputation, Charlie, and the boys are going to raise the money to help me build the Ray Dixon gym, just like your pa wanted. You see, Dix, with our own gym, things will be a lot different. There won't be any more worry about money. You don't know, Dix. You just don't know how tough it's been. 
I know, Ma. I know you'll win, Dick. Just know you'll come through. <laughs> come on, I gotta stop all this. Come on over here, let me brush your coat. Ma! A month ago, if this had happened, I'd have died, Dix. You give that to me. But you're gonna win trophy after trophy after trophy. You just gotta. You just got to. Who is it? It's Dr. Steiner. Good evening, Dr. Steiner. Dix isn't here. Oh? May I come in a minute? Sure. Sit down. I'll pour you a cup of coffee. Oh, thank you. Black, please. My boy really works at high jumping, doesn't he? Yeah, he sure does. What do you want to see Dix about, Dr. Steiner? His face? He'll outgrow it. A few scars. Acne can leave worse scars than a few marks on the face, Mrs. Dixon. It can leave very painful emotional scars. <sighs> Come off it, Dr. Steiner. Look, the kid gave you a chance to cure it. You couldn't do it. So forget it. Well, unfortunately, Mrs. Dixon, there are some things that make the cure of acne all but impossible. Fatigue is one of them. Dix is suffering from extreme exhaustion. Dix has never been in better shape in his life. Why do you butt into his life so much? Pimples, that's your business. Stick to it. I do. But acne can be a kind of a barometer. The worse the storm inside the boy, the worse the acne. Dix is not only physically tired, he's been under a very severe emotional strain. I suppose I push him too hard? A boy that suffers from acne, like Dix does, suffers shame among his friends. And so he wins a claim for himself by pushing himself, high jumping. And as a result of his jumping, other pressures, staggering pressures, have come into his life. Like me, I suppose. That's right, Mrs. Dixon. Get out. Exciting a finish for an 880 race as I've ever seen. It looked to us like Herkelrath beat out the favored Czech runner, Herdlishka. But we'll have the official announcement for you in a few minutes. Miss Dixon! Hey, Miss Dixon! Miss Dixon! Mrs. Dixon, did you hear? Ten minutes ago, Dix missed. He missed his first jump. Dix, uh, but listen, Mrs. Dixon, you've got to be sure this is a big thing for him. And at the high jump pit, all contestants have cleared 6-4 except two. Almost and the high school sensation, Ray Dixon, Jr. Almost is now up for his second jump. Here goes Almost to the bar and over. Almost made it, only Young Dixon is coming up for his second jump now. Three misses and you're out. Dixon is in the slot now for his second jump. Young Dixon comes at the bar almost at right angles to it. No, Dixon. Dixon missed that first jump, but he's favored to win. Flatter, you got to change your approach. Great style. Come at the bar, Flatter. And here he goes for his second jump at 6-4. Oh. Well, young Dixon missed his second jump. He's got only one chance left to clear this height. He, he, he missed, he missed his second jump. Lambert, get out. But he's flubbing his easy... Glam, beat it! All right, now this time come at the bar the way I've been showing you, Dixon. What's the matter with you? Well, young Dixon isn't going to let that second miss throw him. He's right back there in the slot, ready for his third and crucial jump. Dix, you've got to make this one or you're out. 
Approach it flatter. Dixon looks very relaxed there in the slot, but wait a minute, he's pulling a switch on us. He's moving down to a different takeoff position. Come on, Dix, that a boy, that a boy. It's a very flat approach to the bar. And here he goes. Good, gather up and lift him up there. Oh, he didn't make it. Ray Dixon didn't make it. It looked for a moment like he cleared it, but he missed. No. And that's the end of young Ray Dixon as far as this track beat is concerned. No. After all I've done, Charlie, Ben, Tim Kaine, George Myers, and your father's name. I'm sorry, Ma. Sorry? I should have known there was only one Ray Dixon. I tried my best, Ma. Six four? There's a girls' school over in Fairview. You'd be great over there. Six, four. You let down all of your friends, Dix. You let down all of the people that were counting on you. I don't know about you, Dix, but I'm not going to lose my friends. They mean too much to me. Inch by inch, we're going to start over. Do you understand? And this time, boy, you'll really work. I'll try to explain to Charlie. I'll, I'll tell him some lie, like he had a stomachache or something. You even got me lying now. And there's a big meet in September, and I'll, I'll get Charlie to wangle an invitation. And this time, so help me, you'll deliver. Who for, Ma? For your friends, that's who for, and the people that had faith in you, Dix. Ma, when I came back tonight at the airport, you know how many friends were out there to meet me? Only one, Dr. Steiner. You're not going to listen to Steiner shoot his mouth off about pimples anymore. Do you hear no more? You're going to make up for that disgrace up at Colby. I never hurt you, Ma. You hurt me plenty this afternoon, Dix. This afternoon, you hurt a lot of people. Let me live my own life, Ma. You've got your life. You live it the way you like. That's up to you. But don't live my life for me. Dad must have been great. But I can't live a dead man's life. Don't wait up for me, Ma. I'll be kind of late. Yeah. <laughs> 